And I want to spend a few minutes this afternoon talking to you or talking to pastors, what we would call mid-career pastors, but more specifically, those those ministers who are in the journey of ministry but are facing right now some kind of conflict or some kind of uh, transition in your life or ministry. And I will give you just three simple things. Number one, the, the thing I'd begin with is just sometimes when you've been doing this ministry thing for a while, and especially when you're facing some uncomfortable situation or you're fixing to uh, transition to some area of ministry or something about your future is about to change and it's a little unsettling, I think one of the things that, that helps me the most and I would suggest to you is you need to remember why you began this ministry journey. Remember why you said yes to that sense of eternal, internal call of the Holy Spirit on your life. You know, I know for me, my life was headed down a particular path and then I had an awareness one day that there was a call of God. And then after I responded to that call and been in this journey of ministry for a while, I had this aha moment that the ministry had not looked like exactly what I thought it would. And while the, where you are in ministry or what you've dealt with may not be exactly what you had envisioned, the starting point for the journey was there was a sense of divine call. There was a sense that there was an awareness that one day the Holy Spirit has called me. God has put his hand on me. This is what I was created for. And so I think sometimes we just need to kind of take a moment and uh, pause and remember why we even began the journey of ministry. What it does is it readjusts our present perspective when we remember the beginning point. But not only would I suggest and encourage you to remember your call. Now, this one's going to sound really kind of unspiritual. But the truth is, sometimes when you've been doing this for a while, you just need to rest. Rest. You know, if we're not careful, we'll think that activity is the same as kingdom accomplishment. But the truth is, uh, recently there's been an emphasis on soul care, about taking care of yourself. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just simply rest. Take a break from all that you're engaged in and rest. Rest physically, rest mentally, rest spiritually, whatever that looks like for you. You know, I've heard, I've heard guys get caught up in, in preaching and sometimes we say things in the emotional moment that preach is good, but it doesn't live well. I've heard guys say, I don't wanna, I don't wanna rust out, I wanna burn out. Well, here's the problem with that. Either way, you're out. And listen, listen to me, God doesn't want us out. He wants us to finish. And we cannot finish or finish well if we understand we weren't created to run 24-7. So sometimes when we're in this journey, especially facing conflict or transition, we just need to take some time to rest. Here's my third suggestion to you. After remembering your call and resting, I want to talk to you about the relationships. Now, the challenge I'm going to have in this is that I don't sound like I'm doing a teaching session to you, but I really do believe that regardless of where we are in the journey of our ministry and calling, there's some essential relationships. I'm going to do them real quick. Number one, you need, you need models. Models are examples that inspire you. Look for somebody who's doing what you have in your heart to do and, and observe from them. And here's what it does. If you begin to understand if they can do it, I can do it. You need models. But now, second of all, you need mentors. You know, we see that illustrated in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Specifically, we think probably about Paul and Timothy. Every one of us need mentors and every one of us need a mentee. I want to encourage you, even in the journey that you are in, Look for somebody that you can learn from. Mentor that can instruct you. Models that inspire you, mentors that instruct you. But here's a third one. Uh, partners to assist you. Here's what that means. You and I simply aren't designed to do ministry alone. As a matter of fact, every biblical model of the church in the New Testament is a picture or model of interconnectivity, interdependence. And so I want to encourage you to allow someone to partner with you, to share your ministry with. And then finally, the fourth relationship would be what I call friends. 
friends to support you, models to inspire you, mentors to instruct you, partners to assist you, and then friends, friends who are just to support. Now, I'm going I'm to give you a real simple acronym for this. Your best friend needs to be the person who brings out the best in you. This is not a preaching point, but this is just a simple way of encouraging because here's what I know. We are most greatly affected by our peer groups and relationships within our ministry context. And sometimes I need to, to maybe change the relationships of my life. And so I would encourage you to, to let the people who are closest to you be ones that bring out the best in you.